Banker by chance, advisor by choice. Mr. M. S. Shabir, founder and managing director at Sensage Financial Services Private Limited, has been an accomplished banker with over 35 years of banking experience in the areas of personal banking, investment banking, private banking, financial planning, and wealth management. He has set up expatriate service desks and international relations centers at 156 branches for four major banks in the Gulf, Saudi Arabia, Oman, and Qatar. As a banker, he was the first to introduce phone banking for NRIs in Oman and launch online trading through VPN in the Middle East. Sensage is one of the first corporate entities and the only one from Andhra and Telangana for a long time which received SEBI Investment Advisor Certificate. I believe strongly in helping shift how people think of money. Money is not a commodity by itself but a means of commodity, says Mr. Shabir. He is also founder president of Association of Professional Independent Financial Advisors. How many people of how many people in this room would like to have a free tax-free income? How many people would like to have a tax-free income? How many people have got an in, are in the income bracket of five to ten lakhs per year? Please raise. Or gentle, can you give me? So, having heard that, I know most of you are students, but. I know most of you are students, but even if you are students, within your sphere, social sphere, sphere, or social kind of a thing, how many do you know of people who have got an income of more than 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs? Very few. You agree? Now, so let's come to an agreement where we'll talk and discuss only about those people whose income is between 10 to 20 lakhs, who can have a regular income who can have planning for something in the old age with a minimal, if not a complete zero tax. And here I am to give you some suggestions and some, give you some tips on how to go about doing it. So let's start with first, how do we do the tax saving for the for salaried class person? In my practice, when people come to me, I talk to them about whether they are doing enough for their tax saving ATC. My experience is that whenever there's a tax deduction, even if it is a small amount, people say, I do not want to file the tax return, so let the TDS take care of itself. That is the biggest mistake that all salaried class people do. I think what you should do is go to a planner, go to an advisor and seek an advice, show him, get naked in front of him financially. Let me put this word. I'm telling you very strongly, get yourself naked financially in front of a planner. That is how you can create wealth. That is how you can create stack. Problem with us is that we do not share. Your savings is 5,000. You do not want to share with the person who is next door. You don't want to share the income with the person who is there, a colleague of yours. So with this background, let me just come to a little statistics first as to how we can increase the income or the revenues for the government. Let's talk about the national interest also. And I come with a very uh, a selfish kind of a motive here. And I take this platform to talk about something about which is very close to my heart. And that is the Islamic or the ethical way of investment. The mutual, let, let me first get into that, the population. Do you know what is the population of Muslims in India? About 100, sorry? 1.7 million. Sorry? 1.7 million. Okay, it's about 180 million. Out of this, let me give you some statistics. One, out of this 180 million, the ones who are paying tax or come with an income, declared income of more than 3 lakhs, is just 6%. Calculate that, that is 1 crore 88 lakhs. Now, if you have a tax saving scheme or if there are some in investments which are tax saving, how many of them make the investment? Very few, a negligible amount. Out of that 1 crore 8 lakhs, where there is an opportunity for you to invest in the Sharia way for tax planning, 
the number is not more than 35,000. It's a shame. It's a myth that we talk about our rights when the opportunities are there, we do not take opportunity, we do not take those opportunities. Where I am coming from is to say that there are four asset classes in the market. The four asset classes are first a fixed deposit, a gold, then the property, and then the stock market. What are the physical assets? Gold and property. <coughs> Ask everybody. Again, I'm going for some polls. How many of you have got a physical assets here? Or how many of you think when you have a money you want to go into the physical assets? Everybody. How do you plan for your retirement? I will buy a property so that I get a rental income. Am I right? right. How do you say, I have to buy gold for my daughter. I have to go buy for my wife gold. Now, everybody, all ladies love the physical gold, but they do not have the knowledge of other than the physical assets. That's the reason why they do not come to the stock market. No? So, either it is gold or physical asset. It is quite some time now that we need to move from the physical assets to the financial assets. Why we need to do it? What is the kind of returns that you got on each of the asset classes? Let's look at it. Fixed deposit. 6%, 7%, it barely covers the inflation. It is plus or one percent the inflation. Two, gold. Yes, every all ladies love it. All friends have got no power to say anything about it. What is it? The return that it will give you, inflation plus one percent, one and a half percent, that's what it is. That's what you must have heard every time. Mujhe pata hai, meri shadi ke hoot gold bada so tha, ab jase satai so hai. Dekhe, bada ni bada. <laughs> you hear this? Yeah. Ghar. Zameen kharid lo. Zameen kai ni jayegi. Zameen to har wakht rehegi. Makan bana lo. Kiraya aaya. If you look, if you, maybe if you fly and then see from the aircraft to find out how much land is there, then you will know what it is. Or if you try to actually calculate the return, nobody will say. I will ask you, can one person, I'll just give an example here in this room. Can somebody, anybody can volunteer and stand up and say that I bought a property at this price after some time, six years, seven years, it has become this price. Okay, let me, let me put it the other way. Normally when we calculate the yields or the return, we never calculate the yields on the property. We say double ho gaya, teen time ho gaya. But we never calculate the rate of return that you get on a property. Third class. Fourth, that is the stock market. When you come to the stock market, either you have the mutual funds or you have the equity directory. Do you know that this real estate will give you inflation plus 3%? It is only the stock market which gives you inflation plus 7%. So if you want to cover your inflation or if you want your 100 rupees not to become 99, then you need to cover inflation. So it has to be inflation plus. Agree? So now if you want inflation plus, then you see which is the asset class which you should be in. You should be in, in the stock market, you should be in into the mutual funds, whichever it is, you know, mutual funds or stock market. If you look at that, India is one country, probably the only country where stock market investments, whether it's a direct investment or whether it's a mutual fund investment, is tax free. How many people of us look at that? We do not look at it. We think that it is a risk. Every time we talk about risk. But statistics, if you look into it, the probability of losing money becomes zero after five years. The problem is that we all want to plan at the age of 30 for your education of your child who is going to be 20 years later, he wants to go to the university, but you would like to plan it all into short term. Property, when you get into it, you say, two salmet double hudaga nikal ke bez dunga dusra. Property prices go down, you say, rehne do bachchan ke liye hai. So what is short term becomes long term, what is long term becomes short term. Every time you should chase the return but never try to think of creating a 
wealth. You do not get into the valuation or the target of what your target is, but say, kitna milega is The greed is there. Another thing is the greed is there. Having, I mean, I lost back to that, that data figures. Let me just go back to that figures and say that if the community has got a 108, is of 180 million and if 6% of them are taxpayers, that is they declare an income of 3 lakhs and above, then uh, how many of them are actually doing a saving? So the demand or the, the demand is there for a tax saving kind of a product for those people who are ethical investors. So if you have 180 million people, why can you, you'll be surprised to hear there's not a single tax saving Sharia compliant on an ethical scheme. This is what I had lost. I want you to think about it, why we are not in the market. That is because the, the products have not come because we are not participating in the market. We are participating in the physical assets. If you start investing in the stock market if by way of mutual funds itself, then you could go to the asset managers like here and ask them, why are we not getting products which is a tax saving scheme? I have made several, I'm in the industry, I have been talking for many and believe me the asset management companies to say it is sad to say that we are split between tax saving and the ethical investment. Again, coming back to there are four there are four regulators. Not many people know about it, but we need to talk about it. There are four regulators in this country: RBI, IRDA, okay, CB, PFRD. I don't want to get into the details, but the one opportunity and the one window which is open for Sharia compliant or ethical investment is only the capital market. Nothing stops us from investing into the capital market. We always go to the safe kind of investments like bank deposit. When your religion, your ethics, your Sharia says take risk, participate in the risk, we are not there. So my humble request to you all is that please do participate in the stock market, whether it's by mutual fund or any other investment, and then try to get the products yourself, number one. Number two, my way of looking at things is different. Even if you do not have Sharia compliant stocks, lot of people are not included in the financial system, they do not open the bank accounts, they do not invest into tax saving schemes or other things and then get away. They participate in the cash transaction, which is absolutely wrong. In this digital market, if you are not into the market and if you are not included in the financial system, you can never develop. So my advice to you all is that please do get into the stock market and then ELSS. Somebody was asking which is the best form of investment. I would, yeah, yeah, just give me five. If, if you want to participate in the ELSS, then I think that's the best way. My practical advice to all my investors is please start, even if you do not have anything, instead of paying tax, first start with the ATC ELSS scheme. It is a lock-in period of three years. The rate of return that you get on that will be much higher when compared to any other class, as a class. And after, if you make a, let's say, 150,000 per year for three years, you could rotate the same amount or recycle the first 150,000 we have invested in the fourth year. My advice to you would be, please keep doing it because the risk will lower down once you invest 150,000 the tax saving scheme, number one. Number two, I don't know whether I have enough time, but I'll just give you a few tips. Second is on the property. Property, everybody buys thinking that the property is the best form of investment, the safe form of investment. But when it comes to practice, many people do not know that there is a capital gain tax on the property. Okay, so they never think about it. Transactions are done on a cash basis. Now that is where the problem comes. Your white money you are converting into black, and then salaried class person is buying a property of one crore, paying 60% cash and 40% debt uh, for 40% by check, which is rubbish. What you need to do is pay everything by cash, even if it has to get and compromise either on the price or on payment of tax of the seller because the power of the compound is much stronger than the cash transactions.
number two. Number three, coming to, I'll just give you a few tips. Uh, Mr. Pankaj was talking about, we also talked about capital gains when you sell the property. Get, should we get into the capital gains bonds? I would advise no. My view is totally different because five years lock-in with a 5.75% rate of interest, if you calculate, you do the other way backward calculation and see what is it that I should, rate of return I should get if it wants to be equal to capital gain bonds. And that works out not more than 7%. If 7% is the return that I can take a risk with and compromise, stock market mutual funds are again a kind of thing where you will get much higher return. Plus the liquidity is there. Now many people make an investment into the second property. What they do is they buy one cash, they, sorry, they sell one property on cash to buy another one on cash. So the cash is rotating but they do not have anything to share. Another, another investment in, uh, incentive that I can give you is that if you are getting into a investment or a regular return kind of a thing, if that is the reason why you are getting into property, then the rate of return that you get by way of rent is not more than four, 3 to 4 percent in the case of residential house and not more than 7 to 8 percent in the case of a commercial property. Commercial property when you get, the problem is you need to keep changing the commercial property every five years, six years, number one. Two, when you get the rental income, instead of that, this, there's no liquidity. There's no liquidity. So at old age, when you actually require liquidity, what you're doing is you're putting all into uh, physical assets where there's no liquidity. You have a property, but you cannot have a regular income. So a good way, a tax planning way, would be to get into a mutual fund for a long time and start a systematic withdrawal plan so that you do not need, need to pay tax. Equity, mutual fund is the best way of investment. Uh, the, we do not take advantage of all the provisions which are tax saving. For example, if you want to really create wealth, like our Pankaj said, that if you really want to create wealth, tax saving is a forced kind of an opportunity for you to create wealth. NPS. NPS is something. We are not thinking about retirement. We are not thinking about retirement. The direct benefit days have gone. If you look into people who are into the government hospital, government services, which are by the state or central, they used to get the benefit of the retirement saving, which means that after retirement, the spouse used to get the pension, you are CGHS, medical free, heads of Kutri. Now, even the government employees do not get that benefit. So if they do not get that benefit, Medical is the biggest kind of a problem when you get into a old age. It is not required as it's not as important when you are young, but it's most very important when you are old. For that, the cost the, or the actual outflow or your requirement at old ages, one is medical, the other is inflation adjusted regular return for your longer life. There were days when at 50 people used to die. Today, the life expectancy is more than 70 in India. So think of it, 30 years is, if it is your working life, 30 years is your retirement life when you do not have any income. So plan for that. So where can you get that? It is nowhere, inflation exists it. It is nowhere except the stock market. And if you cannot get into the stock market, and if you think it is risky, the government has come out with the NPS, where about 50% you can invest into the equity itself, and the expense ratio, or the, the cost of management of the fund is the lowest. Now, recently, they have increased from 50 to 75 percent participation in equity, which I think is a very good opportunity, and you get a deduction of up to 50,000. The employers who are there, employer also gets a deduction. So I think when you create a package, it is advisable for the employer, in the best interest of the employer and the employee, to contribute the maximum for the NPS. Uh, capital gain or property are covered. There are traditional products like PPF or post office, still people go on to that. We do not advise. I think they are all outdated. Uh, uh, we believe, another one, uh, with the permission of Pankaj, let me tell you that all chartered accountants are good accountants. They are not investment advisors.
Okay, we are going to talk about all chartered accountants are good accountants. Earlier, there were no advisors. That's the reason why people used to go. Tax kit, dar ke jaake bolte the, sab ye meraya mere ko file kara. Wo, he will see what you are giving. He will see the paper and file it. He will not go beyond that. I have got clients, many of them who have for decades been with that club with the chartered accountants because they do not have time. They are different from advisors. That is the reason why the Securities Exchange Board of India has come out with a new kind of a regulation where advisors. Have been have to raise them. If you go to an advisor, if you go to a tax planner, he will adjust. He will take your data, and then he will plan out for you. So again, return is not what is important for you. Is not to do anything by yourself, but to go to an advisor. Even if you have an income of let's say forty thousand, fifty thousand, you should go to an advisor. I have known people who have who are below the poverty line and have started the systematic investment plan instead of the cheap funds, and they have benefited because ignorance is the biggest problem with us. You know, with our community, not just with the, with the population. I guess against the other countries where the participation in the stock market is 40% in India is still 4%, and Mr. Bankar says that the money is going in. I think the people have to go and, and have to think more about it. Uh, cost inflation index. Uh, I think I'll just talk with another one good example. I, I'm stressing more on the physical assets and the gold. Uh, two points I will make. Uh, I'll just give you an example of how a physical asset, because everybody has, has got the real estate in mind. In Hyderabad, there is one inner ring road, there is one outer ring road. So an NRI head company came back to India. He said, "Let me invest in the real estate because that is safe. So I will put in four different corridors or four different directions, and he put an equal amount of six lakhs in one direction, second six lakhs in another, and four. After twelve years, okay." After 12 years, when we started looking at the property prices, Mr. Sabir, sorry to interrupt you. We are in short of time, so sorry. please, why? We are in short of time. Please, okay. why? I'll just close it. So, if you if you if you look at the property, four different properties he invested, and if you look at the price return that he got, he got not more than 10 percent. Adjusted for the four properties, so I think that's not a good investment. Just to calculate, so I think you need to calculate and then do it. Second advice for the again for the community that I have: if you do not want to participate in the debt instrument because that is not allowed, my advice you to you would be invest in gold equity, whether it's mutual fund or direct equity, and do a systematic investment plan from transfer from the debt to the equity, from the gold to the equity, because equity and gold are inversely proportional to the growth. Okay. With these things, I drop. If there are any questions, I may take later on. Thank you very much.